Yes, now of course, no. as you know, they've got a very, very new building. Of course, they, well, they now realise, of course, they wanted more than they had what, five years ago. They really just brought it down to that. Mm. Then they realised, of course, they couldn't cope with all the fares on the trains, especially during the trains, mm. uh, when you know, the trains going. So they put in a little box for a chap to whisk tickets for the first three hours of the morning. Mm. And they they built bigger shelters mm. on both sides, and they realised more people were travelling. People are travelling. I'm always amazed how proud of that link is. Yes, how busy it is. Mm. But, um, so um, you know, I used to travel to day to Reading, and I used to stop on seven twenty train, mm. train through train to London, and you've got all the business people. Going. And there was a lot of people got on that train. Mm. Mm. A lot of school children used to. That's right. Yeah, they used to go on the eight o'clock. Mm, so, of course, yeah. it's still quite a busy place. Mm. Um, Was your father involved with anything else? Mm. Oh yes, in the town, oh very mm. much so. Um, he was a very keen amateur. Oh, yeah. He was keen when he was at Windsor, and he was very keen when he came here. In fact, he set up <coughs> um, a railway uh, ambulance division on made of members of the staff. But he was very keen for the town. In fact, he didn't want the for the town. When he first came here, <coughs> um, he was horrified that there was no ambulance. And I can remember him saying that there was a vehicle being used, perhaps one day, for taking someone who died with, say, deteriorating something that was very contagious to New Hospital. Then the following day, the same vehicle, presumably it had been cleaned in some way, in some way, would be taking a pregnant lady um, to a maternity in some way. And this absolutely horrified me. <laughs> I can remember if we had to cut our fingers or anything like that. Oh, you mustn't have it with iodine because you know what iodine is like. Mm. <coughs> that was about all they had in those days. But he was very keen. So carrying on the story, he said this place wants an ambulance, so there was absolutely no doubt about it. So he and several of the other business people got together, he was really chief instigation on his own, but he got various people. Um, one of the James, Norman James, I can remember, he was um, one of his military six that got together and said we've got to raise money to buy an ambulance. And so they decided a carnival was the right thing. And so this is really how the hunk of the started. I think I'm right in saying the first carnival was about 1932, 33. Uh, it's somewhere along that line. You may have got, I've got records on it, of course. <coughs> have you got an actual date of that? 32 to 35, I've got ah, here. That's right, yeah. Three years. Yes, that's, that's it. And so they had these carnivals raising money. and. Then eventually, I can't quite remember the year, but when the first ambulance, in fact, I think it's 1935, I've got a photograph of this, of course. The first ambulance was purchased, and it was delivered to Norman's garage on the Wild Road. And when it was going to be officially launched, whatever happens with an ambulance, um, I can remember walking my father down to Norman's garage. And she said, right, jump in. And I was one of the first few people to ride in the ambulance, not as a patient, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> but I merely rode from Norman's garage with my father up to the town hall where the big celebration was going to take place yeah. uh, for the first ambulance to come. And that was how we first had an ambulance. And then he went, was this? Went on being interested in it, did he? Oh, yes. Did he, um, he continued with his ambulance work. He was a superintendent of the ambulance division here, mm -hmm. and he was very, very keen on this work. He, in fact, had three first aid boxes of the business like that were placed in the country, um, on poles. One was outside the mission halls, I call it, on the end of the Priory Road. One was in the town centre outside the town hall one was down at the bare corner. And he felt that if there were accidents, you had got something in these emergency 
boxes. So that was another thing. And he kept them stocked? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that he did that personally, no, because he had this band of like, ten men, I suppose, it was. Awesome. and I think one of those would be mm -hmm. to keep them stocked up and use the chapel. It's a wonderful idea. I can't imagine that happening now, can you? No. Well, they'd they'd, they'd, wouldn't they'd, they'd be vandalised. Yeah. That's right, yes. But that is what actually happened in these boxes were in existence. And he continued that until his sudden tragic death in April 1939.